Good morning. Uh, it's really wonderful to be here. I was reflecting a bit on yesterday and everybody's talks, and I just want to say that it's, it's really wonderful to be a, a Fulbrighter with all of you. Um, so uh, I think this is pretty special. Um, like like all of you, this has been a long time coming. I've been thinking about the Fulbright, and so now we're here and it's it's moving. So I'm excited to share a little bit about my project. Um, so my name is Brant Miller. I'm an associate professor of science education at the University of Idaho. Um, prior to that, I was a, a middle school science teacher for six years in South Dakota. Um, and so my project is uh, titled Near Peer Scientific Inquiry and Adventure Learning in Chile. Um, I want to start a little bit of, uh, with talking about my philosophy. So my uh, work in teaching philosophy is embedded in uh, place-based experiential learning. So I try to do that with the courses I teach and with my research. And so here you can see these are my students. Uh, every semester we go to, uh, we have a field campus as part of the University of Idaho. And so we go and we immerse ourselves in that landscape, learn about how we can use outdoor context to uh, facilitate learning. So all of my students are going to be teachers, kindergarten through eighth grade, and, and so um, we uh, look at different tools that they can use in their future teaching uh, context. Also, for myself and my professional development, um, embedding myself in a context where I can support my scientific colleagues in their science communication is important to me as well as uh, kind of thinking about how we can deliver education programs in places that you maybe wouldn't think education programs would, would occur. Okay? And so with, with that, thinking about uh, how that philosophy can then uh, be embedded in my Fulbright project is, is kind of a driving factor. Um, at the University of Idaho, my teaching is basically around pedagogy and uh, science education methods. So those are my, my consistent classes. I, I do teach some in um, our, our doctoral program as well. And uh, my research, this is a general statement, but I think it captures kind of how I think about uh, programming and uh, the, the things that I like to uh, work on. My host institution is uh, PUCV in Valparaiso, uh, which is an hour uh, down the road uh, toward the ocean from here. So talking a little bit about the Chilean context, uh, specifically to science education. So um, I will be working with pre-service science teachers at PUCV. And uh, the literature talks about uh, the preparation of, of these teachers is insufficient around uh, the experiences that they're able to have uh, of doing science. And so some of the work that I do at the University of Idaho fit very well with the realities here in, in Chile. Um, there are limited research experiences for pre-service teachers. Um, and so the, the course, one of the courses that I, I teach will be looking to address exactly that, that issue. In addition to that, there's some exciting things happening in Chile right now around science education or STEM education. Uh, STEM meaning science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You might also see it sometimes where they add an A for art. And, uh, and so the Ministry of Education in Chile has invested uh, greatly in STEM education. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, and as far as science education goes, there's no institutions that uh, offer a, a, a terminal degree in science education and so PUCV is, is in uh, the process of, of starting a PhD program. So I've been able to be in a lot of really rich conversations around science education uh, here, here in Chile so far. Um, and, and so I'm on sabbatical from the University of Idaho. I've been here since, since September. Uh, so mid-September um, we arrived in part so uh, my family and I could, could learn Spanish and immerse ourselves uh, in the culture. Obviously, we got a lot more than we bargained for, and um, and it's allowed me to really embed myself in, in a, a few different areas. So, um, along with alignment of my Fulbright activities at PUCV, um, I've had a, a lot of uh, great experiences, uh, conferences. Uh, so the blue points, uh, a couple conferences, one in Chian uh, where I was able to give a keynote, another one in Puerto Veras, uh, guest lectures before the manifestations uh, at PUCV. Uh, seminars, um, workshops, so the, the points down here, I was able to give a couple STEM, three STEM workshops uh, in Punta Arenas and Puerto Natales. 
and um, and then I did uh, judge a science fair when we, when I arrived, which is awesome. Um, which is part of uh, the Ministry of Education and their uh, STEM um, emphasis. Uh, they have a great Explora program where they support um, students to do science fair type of activities uh, throughout the country. So that was really cool. Um, now beyond PUCV, I've made some wonderful connections. Uh, uh, the purple points down here in the far south is the uh, Omora Ethnobotanical Park in Puerto Williams. And then up to the top here, that would be the Universidad Distrito Francisco Jose de Caldas in Bogota. So Fulbright has a wonderful uh, regional travel program that uh, I think everybody can... Only the scholars. Only the scholars. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> that supports uh, travel within the region uh, to can enhance your, your Fulbright activities. So. That's a little bit of uh, previously made progress. Um, on to expectations. So my project is a teaching and research project. So I'm gonna teach two courses. One of them is uh, near peer scientific inquiry. So the idea is that science majors uh, have something to learn from education majors in the, the sense of science communication. Education majors, typically the students I work with, are apprehensive about science. And so doing science really builds their science identity. And so by those two groups coming together and doing an inquiry project together, um, that is what I want to look at and the impacts on those two groups. The other course uh, will be for graduate students uh, around this idea of adventure learning. So adventure learning simply is an approach to uh, designing and implementing educational activities that uses an online environment. And so the adventure can be as simple as answering a question or it could be a more full-blown adventure going from point A to point B anywhere in the world. And so we'll be working with students in that class to uh, think about their local context and how they can use that approach for their future teaching. Uh, I will continue to give seminars at PUCV and my research uh, will be around this question. How do near-peer science inquiry experiences impact participants' understanding of the nature of science and how does it impact their uh, science identity development? So I'm really interested in the education majors, but also the, the science majors uh, as, as well. But as far as the research, this question is kind of more uh, built toward the, the education majors. And I will uh, utilize a qualitative case study research design for that. Potential barriers. Um, so getting here when I did, I was able to see how the manifestations impacted PUCV. Um, so that is a potential barrier, it's something that is on my mind. Um, what PUCV did is they took all their classes online. It would be a total bummer to be teaching an online class uh, in, in Chile, but these are realities that we'll have to, to navigate. Um, also, student enrollment. Uh, it'd be great if I had 10 science majors and 10 education majors and we could neatly move forward, but there, there surely will be some uh, imbalance in who ultimately enrolls. And then lastly is my Spanish ability. I've been working diligently um, on my Spanish. Um, I can't teach in Spanish yet. Um, might be some Spanglish, but I'll keep working. Uh, on it and uh, we'll, we'll navigate that together as an institution at PCB uh, and my students. Uh, and so I want to leave you with this picture. Uh, so this is a picture I took in the Galapagos. This is a baby giant tortoise. And uh, I've come to use this a bit because I think it's a great uh, metaphor for a, being a Fulbrighter. So with our Fulbright, uh, there's probably some safe places that we could find and stay in, uh, you know, get in your shell and move forward in that way. But of course, uh, that is not why we're here. Um, so we need to spread our wings, you know, get out of our shell and really experience everything that this Fulbright uh, can afford to us. Um, and so I encourage myself and all of you to, to really um, uh, embrace it all as, as it happens. So thank you very much.